Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Fade the Beast. Uh, here's one thing I don't understand. Not even a little bit. Chunk loading. How does it work? I don't get it at all. I have one chunk loader. That one right here. It loads one chunk. The exact chunk that the power system is in. Even when this is the only chunk loader I have, if I'm offline, this will keep running, and it'll end up, uh, it'll end up piling up still. The, those chests there are, uh, Cosmic Knight had to come over and shut it off, because I guess it was lagging things out when I was away. Uh, if I turn on the chunk borders, I can see that the fields and this stuff is all within one chunk, and then these, uh, the hoppers are exactly outside the chunk border. My only theory is that something about running machines, like maybe because these, these engines up there are active, uh, or the clutches or something, maybe because there's running machines in this chunk, it stays loaded, and then all of this stuff, because it has nowhere to go over here, because it can't get out of the chunk, it just builds up and ends up lagging out, I don't know. I don't get it at all. Uh, same thing happened over here. There's no chunk loader over here, but uh, as you can see, I've taken all the engines now. We'll get to that in a second. Um, the grinder kept working when I was away. I don't get that. Uh, the bedrock stuff down here, it kept running when I was gone. There's no chunk loader there. I don't understand it at all. So there's something... Something about uh, how things are loaded, or how, you know, running machines maybe affects chunk loading that I just don't understand. It's, uh, it's really kind of annoying. Anyway, what are we doing today? Well, um, I haven't entirely nailed down what I'm going to be doing with the, um, with the bedrock dust and setting up the mob spawning system. Over, if you look at the map here, Right across the lake from us, or right across the ocean, right there, is a tower. It is one of those uh, roguelike dungeon t uh, dungeons. And in there are creeper spawners. So I'd like to get a creeper spawner to do the uh, the thing with, but I don't want to go in there on my own and just kind of cheese my way through it. I'd like to maybe get Nord and Cosmic and uh, anybody else who can show up to have a little fun in there. Uh, so before we do that, I'm going to work on some other stuff. Primarily, I want to turn this into um, run by the hydrokinetic engines. So I've dug a hole down and discovered a lot of lava down here. So I need to clear this out a bit. There we go. I think there's more here. Oh, maybe I already got that. There we go. So I'm just going to clear out the lava here and try to get uh, enough room that we can uh, bring the lube that's over co already coming from that uh, tesseract over at the bedrock thing over to this. Uh, so I'm going to do that, and then I'll be right back. Okay, I have the underground cleared out a bit. We have a clear path over to the Lubricant Tesseract, so let's bring that over. Um, what height are we going to want it at? The engine is going to be right here, so the end of it will be level with that, so we may as well just bring this around like this. There we go. And, oh. Well. There we go. And boom. Okay, so that'll bring the lubricant over. And we want the engine which, oh, I do have it, there we go, right there, and we want 
a belt hub right there. We gotta flip that around like so. And we'll run the belt from that straight up. to that level. So let's do this. There we go. We'll put the belt hub there. Oh. Flip it that way. Do that. Hmm. There we go. Cleared it. Should have a clear line of sight. Additional data present, that means it's linked to that one. And then, bam? Is that too far? What level is this at? So this is... What's 68? Is 68 my head or my feet? My head, okay. So my head's at 68, that's 69. If I come down here, that one's at 5. So 69 minus 5 is 64. It should be linking. I don't know why it's not, but I guess we can eliminate a level here. We can bring it down one, maybe. So if I get rid of that, where's my pick? There we go. So if we move this down one to there and then drop down that one, um, additional data, let's clear it. There we go. Click that. Click that. Didn't connect. Why is it not connecting? Come on, guy. All right, let's move it down one more. There we go, flip that again. Actually, let's clear it. Okay, boom. Boom, come on, really? Does it need clear space on either side? I don't think so. Should just connect. Hmm. Okay, I guess I'm going to need to figure this out. I may have to clear out the entire 3x3 three three area all the way down? I don't know. Well, you know what? Let's, let's test this. Let's just break this. There we go. Okay. So if I put one... I don't know, let's say here. And then go... Straight this way. To there. Oh! That's why, because they're both an output. I'm an idiot. There we go. Okay. Never mind. Everything's fine. Okay, break that. Where'd that go? There it is. Okay. So this has to be there, flipped, and output. And this has to be like that, and that's input. Okay. Additional data present, let's clear it. To clear it, you just look away from something and shift uh, left click. So there we go, we'll right click that. Can we put this back up to the original level that it was on? If we can, that'd be great. I'd prefer it to be up at that height. Just because everything's already geared towards that height. So if we put it there, flip it around, Turn it to output. Boom. 
Done. Sweet. Exactly what I wanted. Okay. Now, we're going to put the gearbox there. And that's the direction it should be going. Get rid of that one. And... I want to put a dynamometer in here. We'll put that here. Like that. And I also want to put a clutch right there. And that is as it should be. So if we slap a lever there, we should be able to control it. This knee this is set to torque. And if we look at the Rotary Craft Handbook, uh, the engine we're going to be using is the hydrokinetic engine. At maximum power, it puts out 16 kilo newton meters of torque. To run the grinder, right there, we only need 128 newton meters. In order to... Uh, keep it above that. Like, that's the amount we need just to make it run. And we're going to easily outdo that with a 16 to 1 gearbox. So now we need to get some lubricant in there. There's none in that. So, let's grab a couple buckets. And just put some in manually for the moment. There we go. Get rid of some of this crap. Alright. Oh man, are we out of lubricant? Son of a... Alright, well we got some down here. This is the channel that we're going to have the water come down, by the way. Wow, that used up a lot of lubricant filling this thing up. There we go, we got one bucket. Well, we're going to start making a whole bunch of it here in a second, so that's not too big of an issue. Alright. There we go. Okay, we'll put the lubricant in here. Good enough for now. It's not going to blow up on us, which is the important thing. Okay. Are we ready to do this? I think so. No, we gotta change that to that. Now this is set to speed. Uh, so what that does, because it's a 16 to 1, uh, let's look in the Rotorcuff book here again. Uh, where's that engine? So it'll divide this by 16, which brings it down to 1,024. Um, at the same time, it'll max or it'll increase the speed by 16. So 32 times 16. I'm not sure what that is off the top of my head. Uh, probably like I don't know, 2,000 or something. Well, not 2,000. Maybe, well, maybe a thousand or times 10 would be 320 times four is 128, so 320 and 128 is 5, 4, 448, plus 2, I don't know, whatever. It'll be quite a bit. 400 and something, almost 500 per second. 512, I guess. Um, which should get this thing going pretty fast, I think? I'm hoping? We'll find out. Uh, we need some water. I don't want to grab it from the lake. There we go. Okay. We'll put it right there. Hopefully, this is all going to work properly. This thing should start spinning momentarily. It'll take a second for the water to get down there. Uh, 
Come on. Okay, what's going on? Why is that not spinning? There's nothing in the way. Could it be because of that? I don't think so. What are we doing over here? Oh, maybe it is because of that. Crap. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna just, um... I'm gonna raise this up one level and see if that makes a difference. So I will be right back. Okay, there we go. For whatever reason, this thing wouldn't run until I broke the, the blocks up here. It seems like it's well out of the way of where this would need um, to have room, but I guess it needs to have that area clear as well. Anyway, so that's turning. Let's go back up here and see how that is doing. That's spinning. Everything isn't uh, breaking. We got 512 newton meters of torque. 496 rads. Operation time is 18 seconds. That's almost longer than it used to be, isn't it? Huh. Let's get some... Um... Let's get some... Uh... Piping or whatever it's called. Fluidux. Where am I? There we go. Let's put the Fluidux on this so that we can get... There we go. Boom. Just so that this thing will get lubricated. Um... So, this is... We have 512 Newton meters, and we need... How many? 128. Uh, so we could... Put another gearbox in here. We could put a 4 to 1. We have a 4 to 1. Let's do that. Let's oh, get rid of this dynamometer. Let's put the gearbox in there. Uh, turn it to speed. So four to one, speed. Let's get some lubricant, which we have none of. Um... I guess we go get some from down here again. Ah, uh, ah! Those things do hurt you if you walk into them, by the way, those engines. Uh, let's grab some from there. Oh. There we go. We'll lubricate the, the gearbox and then turn it back on here. We don't need the dynamometer, I just wanted it there to see what the actual numbers were, but I think... This should be fine. Nothing's breaking. This is now down to 12 seconds. That seems like it's slower than it was before. I guess what we'll have to do is put two engines down there and then two of these, maybe? I don't know. I'm going to do some math on this. Uh, I'm going to make another engine, put it down there, clear another path down for water and see what happens. So I will be right back again. Okay, I've set up the second engine. Let's break these, get the water flowing. There they go. Let's go back up. And let's see how much power we're getting out of these guys. So now we have 
Why does that seem like it's the same amount? Maybe that's the most the belt hub can move. Alright, I guess let's waste that lubricant. Break this guy. What are we getting out of him? Oh, you know what it is. 8190... Uh, 8192 kilonanometers or whatever it is. That's the most that a belt hub can move, which is half, I think, of what the the engine is putting out, isn't it? Oh, that is annoying. Yeah, it can only move half of that torque. Oh, man, am I going to have to build shafts the whole way up? I guess. I guess that's what I'm going to have to do. Alright. So that is where we are going, I guess. There we go. A block. That off. Um, I will be right back. Okay, so we need to set a bevel right there. And we need to figure out what side that input is on. Come on, where is that? Oh, this needs to change. There we go. Black is up, and that's the way that's going. Okay, there we go. That's actually perfect. I think. E. Yeah, that's up. Okay. I think, wait. No, that's backwards? That has to be like that? There we go, red. Red is output, so red is up. Okay, perfect. Now we have diamond shafts. I made 64 of them, which should be enough to get us up to the top. Let's, fingers crossed, they don't all break. How close are we? We're at 63. Should be... Yeah, there we go. Alright. Oh. So there, there. And we'll put another bevel. What's down? That one? Yes. And output needs to be... There. Input is... What was it? That one? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, let's put a dynamometer here, make sure it actually is coming up, and then let's go back down over through this hole. Take some damage. Break the cobblestone. The shafts didn't snap. Excellent. Okay, that was the one thing that uh, concerned me, because we're putting a lot of power through there. Let's go check that dynamometer and see what we're getting now. So, we might have to... Uh, I made an 8 to 1 gearbox, but now that we have all this power, and now that we're not limited by that belt... What are we getting? 31,000 torque and 31 rads per second. Okay. So if I break this, and, oh crap, we need more lubricant, don't we? I wish you could get it back out of these things, because we have 24,000 sitting right there that we can't get out. Uh, it, hmm. Okay, I'm going to be one second, we're going to get some more lubricant. Okay, let's just use... The 16 to 1. We're going to put a clutch right here just to bridge that space. Um, what happened? Oh, there it is. There we go. Uh, 
We're going to use a clutch there to bridge the space. We're going to use a dynamometer over here to bridge the space. I put some lubricant in a 16 to 1 gearbox. Boom. Oh, crap. Change that to speed. There we go. So, 18 seconds. I think we can put another 16 to 1 there. And that'll increase, double the speed, and hopefully we can get that down to a much better speed. We might actually have to end up putting another one in here somewhere, too. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to let it run, though, because we need to get that, that lubricant back to some kind of reasonable stock level. Um, and I think we've been running fairly long here, so I'm going to cut this episode. We've kind of got this set up, more or less. I just need to swap some of these gearboxes out. Um, I have the 8 to 1 that maybe I'll put in now. Oh, but... Okay, let's get that clutch back. Uh, let's replace this with the clutch. Right there. And we'll put a block there so that I can... Put the lever on there. There we go. Oh, actually, we'll turn that off. Uh, put the clutch there. We'll put the 8 to 1 gearbox there. And then hopefully, just turning it on, it won't take a whole lot of damage and we can just get the, the lube directly into that. Don't take any damage while you're working. Oh, and that needs to boom. Speed. Okay, so that turned it down to 9 seconds per operation. Took a little bit of damage. But it's got some lubricant in it now. I'm going to swap that out once we get more to the 16 to 1. That should bring this down to maybe about 5 seconds per operation. We should be blowing through the canola seeds at that point. Uh, but that is faster than it originally was. So that's good. I might take this off for a second, slap a dynamometer in there just to see what kind of output we're getting. Um, but yeah, so this is pretty decent. It's working out. So we're going to end this here. Once again, I'm Nightcat. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.